Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use iMates to assemble compo VEX components in Autodesk Inventor. I have a new assembly started here, and the first piece I brought in was the base plate, and I brought in a winch bracket as well. When I click on the base plate, you see it's all of these little icons show up. These icons are for what are called iMates. iMates are one half of an assembly constraint assigned to a specific uh, location on a part. When you put two matching iMates together on two parts, you'll create a single assembly constraint. I'll show you how to use that to assemble this part. So I want to put this winch bracket on top of the base plate. So I'll rotate around to see the bottom of the winch bracket. Sometimes you have to zoom in so you don't have to deal with all the holes you're looking at. Now let's start with the corner here, and I want to get the assembly constraint for the bottom of this hole. To do that, I need to hold on alternate, and then click on the assembly constraint. As I start to drag away while holding alternate, you can see that I have now that um, uh, the preview of that insert constraint that is attached to that hole. Let's do that a little bit more so I can see the base plate as well. And now I will grab... Let's get it close to where I want it. I'll grab that insert constraint, bring it to a hole, and you'll see that it'll pop in place in a preview. When I let it go, try that again. When I let it go, it pops in place. Now, it's perfectly aligned because the pieces came in the line, but it's not fully constrained. If I grab this piece, you can see I can still turn it, because remember I put in one insert constraint. That still leaves the rotational degree of freedom. So I want to get at least one more hole inserted here, so I'll pull it off to the side a little bit, get my insert constraint inserted, and pull it in here. Now this piece is fully constrained. Now, in reality, uh, we would actually put uh, some screws in here. So, to make it uh, a good visualization, let's put in a few screws. Place components. I'll find the number eight screws. I'll use the three eighths inch long screws. I'll put four of them in. And now, same idea, using the eye mates. Hold down alternate, find it, and it'll pop into place where it belongs. That one you can see I accidentally put down on the base plate below it. So I'm going to undo that one, grab it again, and find the right eye mate right there. And I have screws. I could do nuts in much the same way on the bottom. And now I'll move on to another component. I'm going to put a, a winch drum in this. So I'll put um, a couple of bearings in either side to put an axle through. So I'll grab the flat bearings. Good. And moving it close to where I want it to be so that I have a good view of it. I'll grab alternate eye mate. Find the hole I want it to get into. Yeah, on the view you're in, sometimes you have lots of those iMate lifts to deal with. So if you change your view a little bit, that can uh, avoid some of that confusion. And again, it'll give a proper preview when you have it aligned the way you want it. This one I'll put on this side. If you do something wrong, it'll just give you an error. You can press cancel and go back and do it again. And to finish the visualization for these parts, we'll put the rivets in. So I will place four rivets. And then insert these. There does not appear to be an eye made on this rivet, so 
I'll just go to. I'll come back and do this one. I'll do an axle though. Uh, to show you though uh, what I could have done with those rivets and what I'll do with the axle is that uh, using I-mates does not prevent you from using other regular constraints. So if I find an axle, place it into my part here, the axles actually have circular features at the end. So I can use a regular insert constraint for that. So I'll grab the end of the axle, align it with that, flip the direction, and if I want to have it sticking out equally on both sides, enough room so I can put a collar over here, I can put an offset, and now it will be sticking out both sides. I put a winch drum on here. I can do the same kind of thing. These do have eye mates on them. So I can pull it in place. Find that hole right there on the axle. Now again, it looks like that's over a little too far, so I'm going to redo that. I think what I'll do is I'll use the outside surface here. Now with this one, it is tight to the side. Perhaps I don't want it tight to the side, so I may in fact delete that one and then do a different constraint that I can use an offset for. So this time I'll just use an insert constraint, flip it around, then I'll offset it. Find out where I want it to be. There it is, constraint to the center. And now I have the winch drum constrained inside. As you can see, it doesn't move with the axle because I need at least one more constraint. If I wanted to, I, I'll do it right now. I'll put an angle constraint between a flat surface here and the axle itself. So I'll just choose an angle, a directed angle with two angles. I'll use any flat surface on the winch drum and then the flat surface on the axle. Now that that's constrained, when I turn the winch drum, the axle will turn as well. So using a combination of I-mates and regular constraints, it's uh, quite simple, uh, at least comparatively without I-mates, to assemble VEX components um, in Autodesk Inventor.